Hello everybody, welcome to Mike's Mike. My name is Mike. Welcome to a new year. Welcome to 2020. Welcome to the year of the rat. If you thought we thrived in 2019, oof, 2020 is our year. So since it's the year of the rat and I'm reaching my maximum power, I thought I would tackle one of the most difficult things that I could possibly do on my channel. And that is rank childhood shows because that is just no easy task. So just before filming this, I went through all of the networks that I would have watched shows through. So like Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Disney Channel, all that jazz. And I screenshotted all the shows that I watched all seemed familiar. Now I've got 69 shows, that wasn't deliberate, but I mean, it's the year of the rat, we're just gonna, yeah. Before I go through the tiers, I just wanna make a disclaimer and say that if I'm going through these and you know that I'm 24 and I bring up Dora the Explorer and you're like, the timelines don't match, you weren't Dora the Explorer age when Dora the Explorer came out, no judgment, don't judge me. You know, maybe I had a rough day at school and I came home and Dora the Explorer was on and I just turned that on and I was like, damn, she really be making points with that map. Okay, so the tears that I've got are very much skewed to the positive side because when you look back at these shows, you're like, oh my gosh, nostalgia, future nostalgia. Stream Dual Leaper. So at the top of the list, I've got legendary in all caps. Now a show that's in legendary tier is untouchable. It can't be touched, hence untouchable. It'll make more sense when I put a show in the legendary tier, but just know that legendary is above iconic, but also is iconic in itself. But the iconic shows are not necessarily untouchable. <laughs> Much to consider. Iconic shows, you know, if this was any other kind of list, these shows would be at the top. But because it's legendary untouchable, all caps tier, and they don't quite fit that, but they're still iconic. The next one is Global Top 50. Now bear with me on this one, it's 1.32 a.m. and I just downed a can of vanilla Coke and I just wrote that tier and it made so much sense to me when I did it and now I'm like, oh my gosh, Angie. So Global Top 50 to me means middle ground for me, but maybe someone's iconic or legendary tier because on Spotify you have the Global Top 50 and sometimes I'm scrolling through those songs and I'm like, how? and why. But if a song's in the global Spotify top 50, then it has to be good and people like it. So then I've got, I don't know her tier. Now this is of course referencing Mariah Carey. Und was ist mit JLo? I don't know. Die kenne ich nicht. Oops. A show that's in I don't know her tier is something that I remember watching, but I don't really remember enjoying, or I wouldn't be able to tell you characters and plot points. Whereas like if you put a legendary or iconic show in front of me, I'd be like, oh yeah, for sure. I know what happens then. I know who's who and what's what. And when's when and how's how. And where's where. Ugh. And then, so the duality of life. We had Caps, Legendary. Now we've got Caps, Disgusting. Why does somebody not know how to flush a toilet after they've had a shit? What do you mean? Well, it was fucking one of yes. Disgusting! A show that is in the Disgusting tier is something that I pulled from the recesses of my mind, perhaps also repressed memory that should have stayed in that dark corner that it came from. And don't forget, I am Australian. So this may be skewered to the Italians. Australians. So I'm going to start with Rugrats All Grown Up because I think this is a good litmus test for what's to come. Rugrats All Glown, Glown? Oh. Glowed. Rugrats all glowed up. Rugrats all grown up to me is global top 50 because Rugrats tears above, but Rugrats all grown up. It's like, why did this happen? I remember watching Rugrats all grown up and thinking this is kind of strange and I feel uncomfortable. Why is Tommy large? And why is his hair that color? And the baby brother, why does he have red hair? Why would they do that to him? So to continue calibrating the list, I'm going to put a legendary show and that is Lizzie McGuire. Hey, I'm Hilary Duff from Lizzie McGuire and you're watching Disney Channel. <laughs> does it make sense now? Are we there? Are we seeing what the legendary tier involves? She's untouchable. Like you can't do shit to Lizzie McGuire. She's so iconic that they're rebooting the show like 20 years later. Like that is legendary level. And like that little cartoon bitch that she had like sometimes on her shoulder and like taking up her own little scenes. That was like, uh, yes. So an example of iconic would be the Amanda show. Maybe I just wasn't cool enough to appreciate the Amanda show to the full extent. I kind of hate this scale now because why did I make iconic less than legendary? 
because it makes it sound like iconic is not a good thing because it's not number one. Oh my God, wow, I just exposed what's wrong with our entire generation. If we're not number one, we think we're doing terrible. Ooh, I just saw something that raised the heart rate and made me a little bit mad. And that's this little bitch. Caillou, Caillou, what a fuck, whatever, I don't care. Disgust that. I didn't vibe with that pebble headed ass one bit. Like he just rubbed me the wrong way. Like, how can it be annoying and ugly, like pick a struggle? An example of the I don't know her tier would be Dave the Barbarian. Like, I remember watching this. I remember there being a castle, but I literally cannot remember anything else about the show. So hence, I don't know her. All right, let's just get into it. Good luck, Charlie. Good luck, Charlie. I think that would be, oh, is that iconic or global top 50? Think, think, bitch, think. <laughs> Thought about it, get fucked. Okay, I thought about it, get fucked. I think I'm gonna put Good Luck Charlie in Global Top 50. No, I have to put them in Iconic because everyone says that like year 10, 11 me looks like Gabe from Good Luck Charlie. So we have to do that for my sake, for my mental stability. Gabe Duncan needs to be an iconic tier because then I can justify the fact that I was built like him. Digimon, bitch. Digimon is legendary. Like Digimon, period. Digimon. I used to vibe out so hard watching Digimon. Like that was my shit. That pretty much, I'm pretty sure that inspired me to do engineering. Just in case you forgot, I have a master's degree in mechanical engineering. Uh, time for another disgusting. And that is Johnny Bravo. That bitch, like, Cash, bitch, you're doing too much. Like, I don't remember a single redeeming thing about that show. I just remember him and his big ass head built like a triangle Dorito looking ass. Anyway, flop. Hey Arnold is going in the global top 50. I used to be scared by their head shapes and that ugly girlfriend that he had. Or maybe she was ugly and she wanted to be his girlfriend, but then he was like, no. But then, how are you to judge, Arnold? Like, you look like a football. Emperor's New School. That shit's going straight to Iconic. I would watch that right now if it was on TV. And that's on Yzma. Oh my god, Yzma was such a baddie. Like, I stand so hard. Anything, like, she did on that show, like, if she was supposed to do the, the enemy, I'd be like, yeah, fuck it up, Yzma. Like, ruin what if fucking Kuzco's life. I don't give a shit. Yzma and Kronk? Like, what was that relationship? Was she, like, his sugar mama? There's so much to unpack there. And, like, her whole purple aesthetic she's serving proud family teas next we've got foster's home for imaginary friends i was a big fan of this show i don't really know why i think it was that little blue bitch i am weasel fuck you disgusting that show gave me nightmares who liked that show did anyone even like i am weasel kim possible legendary come here beat me if you wanna reach me D -d 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 dora if this was not recorded dora would go in iconic but because this is recorded and there's evidence of the, on the internet, I'm just going to put Glor Gloria. Gloria? Gloria the Explorer. <laughs> My gym partner's a monkey. Your gym partner was a monkey. I don't know enough about it to hate it. And like, I, looking at that and looking at Johnny Bravo Dorito built ass, it's just not the same. Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. I didn't have the clearance to watch this show. I didn't have the government clearance. I would watch it and get scared and change that shit right away. Put on Dora, please. Corey, Corey, Corey in the house. Um, that's going in Iconic because for one reason only, and that's for the That's So Pushnik. Oh my God, remember That's So Pushnik? Is that racist now though? I remember laughing at very specific things in my childhood to do with TV and That's So Pushnik was one of them. The That's So Raven ice cream machine was one of them. There seems to be a trend here. They need to have Raven Simone in them. Some call it magic. All right, next we have American Dragon Jake Long. I'm putting that in Global Top 50. I do remember it. And I remember thinking, damn, he's such a baddie, like a bad bitch Barbie Ting's banging body B, everybody B. In the I don't know her tier, we're gonna put Timo Supremo because Timo Suscremo, who the fuck are they? I remember the bitch with the hat and the lasso, and that's probably all I need to know. Something, 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 Juniper Lee. I don't, like, what? How do I have no recollection of this, but I remember her and her hair. All right, next one is Chowder, and Chowder is straight to iconic. Is Chowder legendary? Absolutely not, why would I even suggest such a thing? I'm sorry. Chowder would chart on the top 50. 
Oh my god, actually, Chowder does chart because, hey Panini, don't you be a meanie. Is that not about this show? Because there was Chowder and Panini. I'm putting Chowder in Iconic because that's another one of those shows that I used to lose my shit at watching because they had that built rectangle ass guy called Schnitzel. And Schnitzel would just be like, rada rada, rada 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 rada. And I was going through my Facebook statuses and in 2010, I put a Facebook status up that was just rada 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 rada. And I screamed and clawed my eyes out when I looked at that. But then also I wouldn't make a status about any kind of show. So it has to be iconic. All right, time for another legendary, The Proud Family. I fucking loved The Proud Family. If you have Destiny's Child making the track for an animated show, you know that animated show is gonna absolutely snap. I loved the animation style. I loved how they used color. Like the bullies were like blue, like wow. High school <laughs> exposed. Primary school me was like, damn this, like the themes, the themes love. The grandma. <laughs> Name a bad a bitch. Like literally, I can't. Roly poly oly. You can roly poly down to disgusting tier. Just seeing that little bitch's face just there, like you little lemon head. Like I just saw that and I was like, I know exactly where you're going and you're going down yelling timber. Next we have the replacements. That goes in global top 50. So the next thing we're gonna do is, oh, it is time for an intermission. Everybody please pay attention to Michael number two. Hello everybody, my name is Michael number two. I just wanted to quickly interrupt the video to talk about the Australian bushfires. If you're not sure what's happening in Australia right now, here's a graphic of the Amazon bushfires and the Australian bushfires which are happening right now. Australia's in a very bad way um, and any kind of donation to the firefighters is much appreciated. So if you're in a position to donate, then I put some links in the description and probably in the comments as well for you to donate to the Red Cross or maybe to the people displaced. And if you're not in a position to donate, I've also put links to resources for you to get up to speed and maybe share with people who are in a position to donate. Much appreciated. Another one for Global Top 50 is Samurai Jack. That's another one that I would shit my pants. Much like me in 2019 trying to get a job at SpaceX, I just didn't have the clearance. Next we've got Recess, straight to Iconic. I have decided that I'm not even gonna try and like be impartial with the rest of these because I can see so many iconic and legendary. I'm just going to let them through. Gretchen snapped. Like Gretchen had the grades. She had the vibes. She had like you like and she, yeah basically I think I'm Gretchen. Shake It Up is definitely definitely one of those ones that I shouldn't have been watching because I was too old um, but that is Global Top 50. Teen Titans this is controversial and I'm ready to get cancelled for this hot take. Teen Titans is legendary, 100%. I'm having a hard time articulating this beyond, it was so good, but this was just so good. Bear in the big blue, oh my God, why was I like really announcing those bees? This is for Rachel, this is for Bear in the big blue house. Bear in the big blue house, I think is iconic because that was my shit, I used to like, bust down Barbiana to that and like that song that the moon would sing when they're all trying to go to sleep I was like I can't go to sleep until that bitch sings that song like don't even try and get me to hit the hay because I will not until the moon says to do so period Jonas I'm gonna put in iconic and then Jonas LA I'm gonna put in I don't know her but wow a moment that's most pleasing to me in my career Hannah Montana got the limo out from yeah. Hannah Montana was that bitch. Like that show was so good. I think I watched every single episode. However, when I found out that that actor who played the brother Jackson was like 30 when he was in Hannah Montana, that kind of, I was just be like. <laughs> Next we have Drake and Josh. Drake and Josh is iconic, obviously. And then attached to that we have iCarly. Is iCarly legendary? See, now this is when I just can't do these videos because I can't make a decision. iCarly's iconic. Iconic. iCarly iconic. It's in the name. Jimmy Neutron, Baddie B, Barbie Tings, iconic shit. Lilo and Stitch, I don't even think I need to explain it. Watch all the shows, watch all the movies, played all the video games, that sandwich stacker. Dexter's Laboratory gets to go global top 50. It scared me slightly. There seems to be a trend here. If it was on Cartoon Network, it scared me. Invader Zim. Uh, I think I'm gonna put that in disgusting tier because every single time that I would change channel to Invader Zim, I would be like, what am I watching? And why is this so frightening? 
and why am I 13 and scared at this? You know, that one's my fault though. And I take full responsibility, take responsibility for yourself. And I will, this one's on me. Sorry, Invader Zim. Sorry to this Invader Zim. Sorry to this man. That's so Raven. Probably the number one show. Oh, Wizards of Waverly Place. No, that's so Raven is number one. And the same point that I made before about Lizzie McGuire, Raven is getting that secondary show on Disney Plus and not all these baddies get that. Next we have Fillmore. If I saw this Fillmore walking down the street, I wouldn't know who it is. Sorry to this Fillmore. I mean, he could be walking down the street. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know a thing. Scooby-Doo, where are you? That's iconic. I'm losing my voice, which is not iconic. It's quite flop behavior and I apologize. Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. My God, that's legendary. And Sweet Life on Deck. I think that's iconic. So I'm about to make an extremely important point and that is that the crossover events. So that's so sweet life of Hannah Montana. That shit hit on a different level. That was a global event. It was the greatest crossover in cinematic history, Marvel tees before Marvel. Like Marvel got the inspiration for Infinity War and the Avengers essentially from That's So Sweet Life of Hannah Montana. I was actually like watching an interview and what's his name? Kevin Feige was talking about how he was inspired by That's So Sweet Life of Hannah Montana because like they managed to get all these like different franchises into one cinematic universe. Like that's huge. When that special dropped, I lost my mind because I was like, holy shit, these are all connected. Raven knows about Hannah Montana and then they all interact with Zack and Cody. I screamed. I was not the same after that. Courage the Cowardly Dog, when I googled this, they didn't give a picture and I was like, that's very fitting because I don't know her. Or do I know her? Muriel. Rugrats, iconic. No. Wait. Oh, Rugrats, legendary or iconic? Rugrats is legendary because it was one of the first shows that I stand. Let's be real, I was standing Angelica and the other flops were like, okay, but Angelica was the baddie. If Angelica released pop music in 2020, I would stream it, absolutely. Even Stevens, mm, that is global top 50 because I remember parts of it and I remember enough to not put it in the I don't know her tier and it's absolutely not disgusting tier because I enjoyed it. Justice League is global top 50 Ed, Ed and Eddie is global top 50 again, Cartoon Network. I was in the right headspace to be watching those shows because I would get scared and I'd get annoyed. And I think, why am I watching this when I could be watching D -d 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 Dora? Tom and Jerry is global top 50. Total Drama Island is top 50. Fairly Odd Parents, Fairly Odd Parents, Round Two, Rabbit Gill, Stand a Bit, Chocolate Shake. That's iconic. Ben 10, hmm, why was I watching Ben 10? I was beyond Ben 10 age. But that show was fun. It was very much Digimon actually now that I think about it. I think I liked Ben 10 because I like Digimon. Wow. Arthur is global top 50 for me, but I know a lot of you bitches would put it in iconic and see if the show was called DW and it was just about DW, it would be legendary. But it's not, so it's not. Sunny with a chance. That is global top 50. I was not a Demi Lovato stand from the start. Totally Spies, bitch, that shit's straight to legendary. Charlie's Angels Who, Totally Spies was just, oh my God, the lipstick fucking laser. Who's doing it like them, honestly? Phil of the Future is global top 50. Blue's Clues is iconic. Don't ask questions. Phineas and Ferb, I was gonna put Phineas and Ferb in iconic and I was like, wait a minute, love. That's legendary. Here's a hot take for you. I feel like the Big Bang Theory got their song from Phineas and Ferb because Big Bang Theory is like, the hung in a shut up. But Phineas and Ferb is like, summer vacation and going my life just to end them. So the annual problem. Discovering something that doesn't exist. Or giving a monkey a shot. Da, da, da. And then the fact that they're built like their names, like Phineas is built like a P, Ferb is built like an F, Candace is not really built like a C. Maybe it's with a K. Candace. Candace. 
Magic School Bus is top 50. Powerpuff Girls is, is, oh my God, is this iconic or global? It's global. Zoe 101, ooh, is iconic. Zeke and Luther, like I vaguely remember that. That's, I don't know her tier, that's a prime example. That's probably why I made that tier. SpongeBob SquarePants is legendary, like let's not even mess around. Also, I realized after all this time, I wanted to be SpongeBob or Patrick or Sandy, and I really came out to be just a Squidward slash Plankton ass bitch. Next we have Wild Thornberries. I'm generally sweating because this is so difficult. This is iconic. That show was so much fun. And then I had that annoying little brother who was like <coughs> Ned's Declassified, that is iconic. Art Attack is global top 50 or iconic. Nah, 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 Art Attack is iconic. Who am I kidding, honestly? Okay, this is a hot take. Pokemon is iconic. A cancellation today, perhaps. I can't, with logical and sound mind, put Pokemon in the same tier as Digimon. I just can't do that to my baddies, you know? And we're gonna wrap up with two absolute legends. We've got Wizards of Waverly Place and Disney Channel Games, bitch. Disney Channel motherfucking games. So before I said that That's a Raven was my number one, actually, revision to that, That's a Raven was number one for a period, and then Wizards of Waverly 2. Two? What the f oh my God. Wizards of Waverly Place, was number one for period two, period. What's that? A hat, a crazy, funky, junky hat overslept, hair unsightly, oh, she is unsightly, trying to look like Kira Knightley. We got so much from Wizards of Waverly Place. We got Selena Gomez from Wizards of Waverly Place. We got David Henry, who brought a gun to an airport. We got him from Wizards of Waverly Place too. And then Disney Channel games. What is there to say about Disney Channel games? That is an Avengers level threat. When I said that That's So Sweet Life of Hannah Montana was the most ambitious cinematic crossover, it's got nothing on Disney Channel games. Bitch, we had High School Musical and shit in there. Like the sheer amount of iconicity that would be in an episode of that show, I can't. Like even thinking about it, I'm getting sweaty. Let's have a look at the list from the bottom up. Can I get that Tron? Can I get that Remy? Can I get that Coke? Can I get that Henny? Can I get that Margarita on the Rock Rock Rock? Can I get salt around that rum 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 tray? I was like, yo, tray, do you think you could buy me a bottle of rose? Let's kick it now. I'm with the bad bitch, he's with his friends. I don't say hi, I say keys to the bands. Keys to the bands, keys to the bands. Motherfucking right, right, B to the 10. If a bitch tries to get cute, I'm a slugger. Throw a lot of money at the Daniel. Throw a lot of money at a Daniel. Fuck her, fuck her, fuck him. Daniel, fuck him. Th then I'ma go, then I'ma go and get my Lewis, then, then I'ma go and get my Louisville slugger. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm really such a lady. I rep young money, you know, Slim, baby. And we be doing donuts while we wave in the 380. We give a lot of money to the babies out in Haiti singing all around the world. Do you hear me? Do you like my body? Anna, Nikki, oh, rest in peace, Anna Cole Smith. Yes, my dear, so explosive. Say hi to Mary, Mary Joseph. Now buttons up, my dub, my dosage. That was very stressful, and I feel like you're gonna tear me to shreds, but just know that I did my best. That brings me to the end of this video. I know it was a long one, so if you stuck around this far, Thank you so much for watching. As I said before, if you're able to donate to the Australian bushfires, I put some links in the description and also some resources that you can share around if you are not in a place to donate. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like. If you've got something to say, and I know for a fact that a lot of you are gonna have something to say, then leave me a comment. And if you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. We're getting kind of close to 200,000 now, which I can't think about it for too long. Otherwise I will combust. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you all soon. Peace out, a bye. And that's on Kira Knightley. Welcome to the end screen. Here you will find another video for you to watch and a link to easily subscribe to my channel. So make sure you subscribe to my channel.